all can Yaazov Ish et Aviv we et Emol we davak be ish to we hayu Levasar Ahad. All right. So upon are thus upon are therefore he shall keep on walking away. All right. Look at that word Yaazov. That third person masculine singular. Cal and per perfect. He shall keep on walking away. He shall forsake. He shall turn his back on. All right. Man. And this man, this ish here, what is this word for ish? What does that mean, uh, uh, Sharon? Ish. What way is it looking at man? Mankind. Man. Man. <laughs> it's not mankind. It is what? This is masculine man. Masculine man. Okay? Masculine man. In other words, the, the male. The man. All right? What it's talking about here now, here we have Adam, and he's prophesying what's going to happen. He doesn't, he doesn't have, a, he never had a mother and father, did he? The only father he had was God. Really, literally. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so he doesn't know what having a mother and father is, but he's prophesying something. He's prophesying, an, he's laying down an edict. Okay? Because of this, he shall keep on walking away, he shall forsake, he shall turn his back on the masculine man, et, et is what? Uh, Pamela, et. Sign of the direct object. In other words, the power, the object is Aviv, isn't it? Aviv. What's Aviv? Aviv. Brother uh, Abe, Aviv. Aviv. What's that mean? Aviv. Mm -hmm. Aviv. Father. Okay. Now this Aviv, uh, what is the root of Aviv, uh, Sharon? Two Hebrew word letters. Aleph, which means what? And then, and Beth, house, the head of the house, okay, the father. And then we have we et, and what part of that we et can we translate? We et, what part of we et can we translate? The and, the 253, page 253, the conjunction, which is we, okay? And his amo, his mother, his mother. And he shall have. He shall have. Look at this. We devoc. Third person masculine singular, while consecutive perfect. What does this mean? Roger? What does while consecutive perfect mean? What's the idea of this verb? Um, he's going to do it um, What is he? he did it. All right. Now, now let's no. look ahead. This is what we call a future perfect, oh, isn't okay. it? A future perfect. He shall have done this. Okay? He shall have clung. He shall have stuck. He shall have formed into one, glued together for mutual protection. Okay? This has a woman and man glued together. See, when you're glued together, the man is facing this way and the woman's facing this way. They have eyes forward and eyes behind, don't they? Eyes forward and eyes behind if they're mutually watching, okay? Protecting each other. It's proskalethesete in Greek. Proskalethesete in Greek. It means to have eyes on the back side and on the front side. And then it says, be ishto, be ishto, be ishto to his, to his feminine mankind. Look at that. Isha, Isha means what? Out of man, and this is what? 
feminine man. Ish is masculine man. Isha is feminine man. He shall cling to, stick to, adhere to, shall have done this, to his wife, his feminine man, his feminine man, his feminine mankind, his feminine counterpart, okay? And they shall have become, they shall have become, Li Basar, Li and Basar. Li and Basar. What's Li? Lamet. What's that on the front of a word mean? Preposition. This is a preposition right here. Sometimes it turns it into a what? Infinity, but not here. Okay? And then to the flesh, Ahad. They will be one flesh. They will be one person from then on. One person. In, uh, in Greek, on the second side of that, are you still on uh, 224? <coughs> Let's see what yours looks like. Yeah, you've got Greek in there, don't you? Let's look at that Greek for just a minute. In Achan, this is the Greek translation of it, which is the Septuagint, because of in Achan tuto kata lepse. And because of this, he shall leave behind kata lepe. That means to walk off and leave to. Leave behind. He shall leave behind anthropos. Here we use the word anthropos. What mistake did they make? What should they, they use instead of anthropos? We're not talking about mankind. We're talking about masculine man, aren't we? What mistake did they make in the Septuagint? What should they put in here? On air. Masculine man. On air. Not anthropos, but on air. Okay? Ton patera. That's fine. You know, when you know enough about Hebrew, you know what should be translated, don't you? Okay? It wasn't Adam there, was it? It was Ish. Okay? The father of him, Altu. And what case is that in? That's a third person pronoun. It's what case? What's the case of possession? Oh, it's a genitive. genitive case. Case of possession. That's genitive, singular, masculine, third person pronoun, that Altu. Chi, conjunction, page 280. If you want to write this down there, I'm just rattling it off. And then tain materain. Matera, that is. Matera. And the mother of him. Okay? And that's accusative singular feminine. Okay? Ton patera. That's accusative singular masculine. And then tain matera is accusative singular feminine. Then we have a conjunction again. <coughs> and then pros ka le te se te de. And he shall cling toward, embracing continually, gluing to, clinging to, pros ton geneke autu, the geneke, the woman. Gynecologist comes from that word right there. By the way, all the Greek, uh, all of the German Greek scholars always have the ypsilon as what? <coughs> Looks like you, don't it? but they try to make it sound like a U, so it would be gunakai, gunakai. But where it came over so many years ago into the, into the medical languages, is she called a gynecologist or a gynecologist? Okay? <laughs> <coughs> and every time you see that, you will see the correct pronunciation of the word ypsilon. You will see it in the Greek grammars, the German Greek grammars is upsilon, upsilon, but it's ypsilon. Now when it goes from Omicron Ypsilon, it turns it into a ooh, like group. This diphthong right here, and diphthong is what? What is the diphthong? Tell me what a diphthong is. Brother Roger. <coughs> so where it blends two letters together. Two vowels to blend together to make one sound. All right. Here we have a ip and we have a o, but when you put it together, you have a, a word like group. Uranos. Uranos. What does Uranos mean? Heaven. Singular. Uranois. Plural. All right. Heaven. Heavens. 
And when you have it in the in the in the Greek uh, Septuagint, many times where it says Hashemaim, it's going to say Uranos, which is what? Incorrect. Incorrect. All right. Did you learn a little something from this? Are you learning how to translate Greek from Hebrew into Greek and do it better than they did in the Septuagint? Remember what the old tradition, the old legend was of the Septuagint. What did they do with the Septuagint? They locked up all the uh, philosopher rabbis. And yeah, in and 70. They came out with the same and they came out with all the same translation. Exactly. First of all, they believed the same thing. And it wasn't a translation, but what was it? An interpretation. Because they did not believe as we teach from the book of Genesis, as we, you go back into the uh, the Jewish Publication Society, which P Pamela probably has one with her tonight, and you go in there and said, God began to create the heavens and the earth. That's not what it says. It's not what it says, is it? What? God had created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. Okay. Now, two twenty-five. Why ye you? She knew him. Arumim. Hadam. We have told. We low. Yith Bushashu. That's a big word, isn't it? And <clears throat> let's look at this one now. Sharon, can you conjugate that verb for me, please? That why you? Um, third person masculine plural well consecutive. Okay. All right. Third person masculine plural. Now let's translate it correctly. Okay. And. And um, they became. And kept on being. Kept on being. That's right. They became and kept on being. All right. They became and kept on being. Sha, shani him. Shani him. All right. What's this shani him? What's that mean? That means to divide, don't it? That means two. It means at least two. Okay. Both of them. They the two. All right. Now we have the rub arumim. Arumim. Seven hundred and thirty-six. All right, now this is basically a prophecy of what would happen to them. Because they were really not naked, were they? Were they naked? What were they clothed with? The glory, the, glory, the righteousness of God. They were clothed with the righteousness of God, actually. But they would become naked, wouldn't they? Let's look at that. They were both of them not clothed uh, as they would be, but they were thoroughly clothed. All right? <clears throat> they had not become naked. They had not become wicked, deceitful, whatever, the man and the woman, and not they had shamed themselves. And they had not shamed themselves. They had not shamed one another. Man and woman were were clothed with righteousness. It says that both of them were naked. They were not. They didn't have any physical clothes on, but they were clothed with righteousness. In other words, their nakedness was not shining through, and they had not shamed each other. Literally, now how would you shame each other? How would they shame each other? That's pretty hard question, isn't it? How would they shame each other? How would that be? How would you shame somebody? How would you shame somebody? Well, By acting deceitful. Is that right? How, uh, being fraudulent. That's how would you would shame. They had not shamed each other. They had not defrauded one another at all. Period. They were just happy as hogs in the sunshine. Just happy. 
they had not begun to deceive one another. They had not begun to try to take advantage of one another or anything. And yet they were not clothed with any clothes. They were clothed with righteousness only that God had given to them. Innocence. They were clothed with innocence. That's all that was on their bodies. Just innocence. Clothed with innocence. Three and one, we have a horrible chapter in the Bible. This is evil. Terrible, terrible, terrible things. Now we find out why Adam was supposed to be guarding the garden. He wasn't doing his job. He wasn't protecting his wife. He wasn't doing what God told him to do. Or else he would not have allowed this to happen right here. Genesis 3 and 1. Let's look at this. We ha nahashi. Haya arum. Mikal chaya hasade asher asa hadavar Elohim. Wyomer El Ha Isha Of Ki Amar Elohim Lo Tachilu Mikal Es Hagan We Hanashi We Han Na Chash We Han Chash And the the serpent. And the serpent. He had become. Look at that. And the serpent. He had become. Look at that. Was he created that way? No. No. The serpent was probably the gra- the rabbis that make comments on this. Kyle and Delish, many of the commentators from way back yonder, they said the snake, the Nahash, that this Nahash was uh, the most beautiful and probably the king of all the beasts. We have him in the uh, in the millennium. The snakes are still what crawling on their belly. That was a curse, wasn't it? We're going to see that curse later on. But the, the snakes are still cursed in the millennium. They're not walking upright. Right here, this snake was walking upright. And the serpent, we hanahashash, haya orum. And the serpent, he had become orum. Subtle, crafty, foxy, lewd, Deceitful, naked. This is that word over here. Over here. Okay. The same word, 225, we have in 321, but we have a total different connotation on it. The serpent was was painted and colored with beautiful scales. Whatever. Snakes, some of them are just absolutely fantastically beautiful, aren't they? They shine. <coughs> Deceitful. It means prudent. The uh, Septuagint is froni motatos, froni matotos. Gesenius in 615 and Davidson's talked about high minded, crafty, highly in- intelligent, prideful, proud, arrogant. He had existed in perfection. Now he has changed. He has become. The snake has. What does this tell us about the animal kingdom? Tell me right now. What's it tell us about the animal kingdom? They were supposed to be our companions. They were supposed to be our companions, yes. But what else does it tell us about this? this? Volition? They have volition. Did this, did this Nahash have volition? This one here that was the king of all the Nahashes, the forefather of all the Nahashes, this one had what? Volition. He had become. He had become. 
crafty. How did he become that way? How did it happen, uh, Pamela? What do you think? Huh? He had loaned his physical form to Satan, that beauty. That beautiful physical form he had loaned to Satan. Okay? Me call. Me is what? Comes from man. Me call. Me call. That's a preposition, and it means from page 580. Okay? Write that down if you want to. I don't think it's written down on there. And then call. That means all. That's describing how many, huh? From all of the chaya. Chaya. What about this chaya? Pamela, tell us about Chaya. Uh, okay, now that's not that's not what I want to get. Uh, uh, what does that mean, Chaya? Uh, Brother Abraham, Chaya. Sharon, Chaya. Are these the wild animals? Uh, not, the cow, not the domesticated kind, but the other kind? It's somewhat, yes, that's the idea, but that's not what I want out of you. Brother Roger, Marilyn, you're next. <laughs> I'm telling you, girl. Beetle. Work what? Beetle. What? Beetle. No. <clears throat> mm-hmm. What? What is this, uh, Roger? What? What am I looking for here? This chaya. What does that? What's the root of that? Chaya to become. No, no chaya. Uh-huh. That's a chaff there on the front of it, not uh-huh. a okay. half. What does that chaff on the front of this mean? Chaya. Uh-huh. Living beings. Living beings, living things, living animals, living things. Okay. Ha said that. This is the field. Ha is a definite article in it, page 206. And then field means what, uh, Sharon? Meadow, moist, meadow, prairie land where there's enough moisture to grow things. Okay. Asher is a particle of relation or relative particle, page 81 through 4. Okay. From all the beasts of the field which Asa, let's conjugate that verb there, Brother Abe. Asa. Conjugate that one for me, would you? Asa. You conjugate verbs and you do what the nouns? You decline them. All right. Conjugate verbs and decline nouns. What about that one right there, that asa? Brother Abe, can you read to me what that is? Third person what? Asa. Okay, third person masculine singular. Cal perfect. So how should we translate this? Of all the animals, of all the living beings... All the living things that Jehovah God had, he had made. That's perfect. Third person, master, senior, cow, perfect, he had made. It comes from Asa, doesn't it? That's the root of it. <coughs> Jehovah, Hathavar, actually. Hathavar means what? The word, all right. What does the word Jehovah mean? He who shall become. Comes from what word? A verb, Hayah, page 224 and page 243. 224 in Brown Driver Briggs, page 243 in Kohler and Baumgartner. It means to become, okay? Elohim. Tell me about the word Elohim. What's that word Elohim mean there, Mame Pamela? See, I'm working you guys over tonight, aren't I? This is a test. This is what i got to do if I teach this for credit, you know. i got to find out what you know. It's a test every night. Yes, young lady? Sister Pam? Uh, creator. creator. Really good. A plus. 100% on that question. And then Wyomer. Wyomer. Tell me about that conjugate Wyomer for me. Marilyn? Huh? Wyomer. <laughs> conjugate that one for me, Pam, uh, uh, Sharon. That's right. Now translate it for me. He said and kept on saying. All right. He said and kept on saying, El Haisha. El means what? What is that? 
unto, unto, that little preposition there, unto, can even be like an adverbial also, unto ha isha, the woman. So he hits the woman, and the word woman there means feminine, man, or out of man. And how did woman come out of man? Tell me about that now. How did God, God put a great, gigantic, powerful, hypnotic trance on Adam? And how did, he, where did woman come from? Did she come from a rib? What did she come from? Uh, what? From every side. How many sides? Six. All six sides. Of man, that's where woman comes from, it's from the sides of man. And then he closed up the fleshes and the bones and the bloods instead of her, didn't he? All right? <clears throat> Unto the woman. Off. Off. Page 65. That literally means truth. Truth or true. And then we have the word key there, which means because. Yes. Which one? Off. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Page 65. Let's see if I can find 65. Boy, I went way too far. 65. Off. Off. Let's see if I can find that in here. Actually, it's on page 64. A conjunction denoting addition. Something greater. Now, if it would be ok, what would that be? Ok would be something different, wouldn't it? Had dot in the middle of it, wouldn't it? Instead of that slanting sign, that slanted one means it's a that's a an F sound or a PH sound. That's pay. Uh, something greater, very rare, plain prose, more usual. All right. Uh, truth, affirmatively. I have spoken. I will also do it. Okay. Really, indeed, a particle of affirmation. See that? Indeed or really. <coughs> or truly. It's kind of like the word amen. Okay? <coughs> and that's on page 65. You got that one? Off. Awesome. That kind of looks like the, bird, the word for bird, doesn't it? Let's go on a little bit further now. <clears throat> because, and then amar, amar. Here we have a, uh, the root of the word Wyomer. Okay, but it's different. Why well, are you going to conjugate that one for me, Sharon? Uh, third person masculine singular cow perfect. All right, third person masculine singular cow perfect. And how would you translate it? Has he said. He has said. He has. He has said, because he has said, Elohim, the creator, our creator. You write down creator right down there, that word Elohim. That's got creator in it. Then we have a uh, adverb of negation here, this word low. <coughs> it's adverb or particle of negation in some places. And the equivalent of it in Greek is what? The particle of adverb. Negation in Greek is may, and the adverb of negation in Greek is what? Uk. Okay? You're traveling between languages here, see this? We're going through three languages most of the time. But to understand this language, you have to. You have to. And then we have tochilu. 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 <coughs> I don't know. Tochilu. And it is uh, second person masculine plural, cal imperfect. Second person masculine plural, cal imperfect. Who's talking here? Huh? 
Who's this rascal? Well, this is Satan. That's Satan. What's he doing? Messing with a woman, isn't he? Yeah, but he's trying to twist God's word. Yes, he's tr twisting God's word up. And he's trying to deceive the woman, isn't he? he? And he is deceiving the woman. He's doing it. And where is the origin of all evil? Satan. Now, in the world, some groups of people have uh, Satan as uh, uh, absolutely necessary. Did you know that? Because they're opposites. God is here, good, and Satan is here, bad. And we have good and we have bad. And that is necessary. We wouldn't know good if we didn't know what bad was. We wouldn't know bad if we didn't know what good was. This is their whole philosophy. Okay? But we're going to find out that that's not true. <coughs> Excuse all of my uh, sinus infections and ear infections and everything else. Because not Elohim, not he has said Elohim, ye shall keep on eating. Ye shall keep on eating from every, me call, that means from every. There we have the preposition, and then we have every there. That little adjective noun. Tree, that's the tree. The garden. All right? He asked her a question. Uh... God says you can't eat from every tree of the garden, you know. Three and two. Now let's let's look at three and two. <coughs> Watomer. Ha isha. El. Ha nashash. Miperi. Etz hagan. No shell. And she said, look at this now. Let's conjugate this verb. All right, Brother Roger, conjugate that verb for white Tomer. Third person feminine singular, cow, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Okay, third person feminine singular, cow, wow, consecutive, and perfect. So, if the law <coughs> Very good. A plus plus plus. That was good. See that tau in there? What's that tau tell you? Tau says it's a woman, huh? That's feminine. A tau. You see that tau in there? It means a woman. That's feminine. Okay. And she uh, said and kept on saying, "The woman unto the serpent." All right. The woman unto the serpent. This woman here, we have a hall in front of that, don't we? So we have the woman. The only woman around, wasn't there? There wasn't more nor than one, there was just one. El unto preposition. Han na shash. Han na shash. See that none there? See that none? See that in the middle of that? What is that called? Brother Roger? That, that dot in the middle of that name? Uh, the dogish. Uh-huh, the dogish there. Yeah. Okay. What does it do here? Doesn't make it harder, what does it? What does it do to it? Just Makes it double. Okay. Han Nahash. Han Nahash. All right. And the serpent, or unto the serpent, the deceiving serpent, by the way, the deceiving, he had become deceitful. All right. And then we have Mipere. Me peri. Me peri. What's me mean there? They come from man. What does man mean in Hebrew, brother uh, uh, Abe? Men in Hebrew. What is that? Man in Hebrew is a 
preposition. All right, page 580, if you want to write that down, that mem on the front of it. I'd write it down for mine, too. Okay. From fruit, peri, fruit. Fruit. Okay. What is this fruit? This is eating fruit, isn't it? All the trees, all the things on there. Do you, how many of you ever, have ever eaten uh, roses? Have, how many of you have? Ever eat roses? Rose tea. Huh? Rose hip tea. Yeah. Do you, if you ever watch a horse or something one of these days, or goats, or even ducks and chickens, they'll go up to a rose bush and just start eating that thing like it's candy. It's good food. All right. People eat that. A lot of people eat roses. From the fruit of trees. All right, these trees, these trees. Hagan. The garden. The garden. What garden? What does the word garden mean, uh, uh, Sharon? Remember? A walled, protected pleasure park. All right, it's like paradise, isn't it? <coughs> no... Chell, no chell, no cal. And that is, what is that? Conjugate that verb for me. Brother Roger? Okay, so um, the we is first person. Uh, <coughs> yeah, first person. Construct um, plural. And the cal. Yeah, not we or uh, the trees. We may keep on eating the trees, the fruit trees. We may keep on eating. Three and three now. <coughs> <coughs> you me peri, ha etz, asher, bitok, hagan, amar, Elohim. Lo, no. Tochilu, no. Mimenu, no. Wilu, no. Tegu, no. Bol, no. Pen, no. Ta Muton. No. Let's go back and do this one. Here on the front of this here is usually conjunction, but sometimes it's a strong conjunction. What is a strong conjunction, Brother Roger? A strong adversative conjunction. It's Allah in Greek, isn't it? A weak adversative conjunction is day in Greek. Delta Epsilon, Allah, is the strong adversative conjunction. That's but. And the other one is moreover or but. And here we have this U on the front of it. And we have a preposition. We have a, a tri-compound word here, don't we? Tri-compound. We have a conjunction. We have a preposition. And then we have a noun. But from fruit the tree but from fruit ha etz the tree which that's a particle of relation or relative particle betok betok what's this betok what do we have here <clears throat> it's betok how should we translate that be beth is what huh Okay, that's in. That's a preposition. Okay, Beth, page 88, if you want to write that down. All right, page 88. Middle. Toke. Middle. Hagan. All right, look at that. The garden. And then we have the word Amer there. How about that one there, uh... Pamela? Okay, third person masculine. Third person masculine, singular, cow perfect. All right. He has said. That's what it means. He has said. That's cow perfect. He has said. And who is this word Elohim? What does the word Elohim mean? Creator. Everybody's got a creator. You didn't just evolve into the world. Everything's got a creator. Even atheists have a creator. Well, one second after they die, they won't be atheists anymore. The 
it's the end of their atheism. They better make all of it, make, make do of all of it they can do in this life because they sure won't be an atheist or agnostic in the next. <coughs> Elohim. Now we have a low there, and what is that low? What is that thing? Adverb of negation. All right, page 518. Adverb of negation. All right. Now let's look at this here little verb here. Tochilu. Tochilu. All right. Tochilu. What about this tokalu? Conjugate that one for me. The shorish comes from the word to eat a cough. Uh huh. And uh, the ending means uh, uh, a possession. It, uh -huh. belongs, it belongs to you. Mm hmm. Yeah. And um, second person masculine um, plural. So it's um, you guys. Yeah, you guys. Cal imperfect. So Cal imperfect. Don't do this and keep on. Don't Not you guys shall keep on doing this because it doesn't belong to you. That's the problem here. That tree didn't belong to them. Everything in that garden belonged to them except for one tree in the middle of the garden. And who's that tree belong to? That's God. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Look at it with your eyes only. Maybe don't even look at it because. It's not yours, period. You get to looking at something you want it sometimes, don't you? We find out that's what happened. Mimenu. Tell about Mimenu there. That means from the kind of the species of him. From the species of him. All right? From species of him. What's that of him in there? What does that mean? That's on the end of it, isn't it? Hmm? That ending? That, what case is that in? Let's decline that one. What case is that in? Okay. Mimenu. What case is this in? It's a case. It is the what kind of case? Oh, uh, genitive. Genitive case, which is a case of what? Possession. Possession. All right. And then we low. We low. Here we have a compound, a dual compound word, a two-piece compound word. We on the front of that means what? And, and then low means what? Not, adverb of negation. And not, tigiu, tigiu. Look at that word tigiu there. <coughs> that one, second person masculine, plural, cal imperfect. And not ye shall keep on touching. You shall stay away from him. You shall stay away from him. You shall keep on staying away from him. Not, you shall keep on touching him. Stay away. Don't look at him. Don't touch him. Leave him alone. That tree, leave him alone. And then bow. Bow means what? Bow can mean to come. Uh huh. And so it's um, somehow it's being. Changed. It can also mean in him, in, can it? Uh -huh. It can also mean in him. All right. Uh, and you shall keep on touching in him. Don't touch him. Don't reach over there in that tree anywhere and touch him. Okay. All right. And then what is this next word? To mutun. To mutun. Second person, masculine plural, cal imperfect. That comes from meoth, doesn't it? Is that the root of that word? To die. Uh huh. Lest, pan means lest, in order that. Ye shall keep on dying. You shall. Keep on dying. You'll keep on dying until you're dead. You'll keep on dying until you're dead. Three and verse four. Three and verse four. I'll try to get one more verse for you. How's that? Sit my voice and my lungs and sinuses will hold out one more. 
That's a pretty good verse. <clears throat> now this is the serpent's lie. This is the serpent's lie. This is the serpent's lack of integrity. This is Satan's deceptive structure that destroyed the mass of humanity. Every one of their children and them. We have this deception here, this plan. Wyomer, Hanahash, El, Hai, Hayasha, Hayisha, Lo, Mot, T Mutun. And he said and kept on saying, third person, master, senior, cow, well, consecutive, and perfect, Hanahash. The what? The deceiving serpent. What does the word serpent mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? Page 638. What's it mean? 638. What does that word serpent mean? You remember? The word serpent. It means anything hunted. It means serpent. It means viper. It means a charmer. Charmer. A charmer. It means to whisper. It means a deadly enemy. It means an oppressor. It means pernicious. It means eating dust. It means a uh, the character of serpents. The character of a serpent. The character of a serpent. Now what is the character of a serpent? What does the serpent do? He slips up on his food and deceives it, makes the food think he's just a log or something like that, and when they get close enough, what does he do? Gets them. Sometimes you'll see a snake just stick out his tongue. And what does a snake do with his tongue? He's smelling. He what? Smelling. He's smelling. And then a chicken will come by or something. They'll look at that. They'll look at the tongue flicking out there. They'll look at it. How many of you ever seen something do that? They'll just look at that snake's tongue. They'll just look at it. They'll back up and look at it. And they'll get down a little closer and look at it. And he'll just sit still and just flicker that tongue. Flick that tongue. Just sit there. And just kind of hypnotize them, kind of, sort of. Well, they get there and they look and they look. They're looking at that tongue and they're not looking at his eyes. And when they get so far, then he strikes. And it's all over with. It's over. <clears throat> and he said and kept on saying, the Nahash, the deceiving serpent, unto the woman. And the woman here means what? Out of man. Not dying, not dying, not dying, ye shall keep on dying. Not to die, ye shall keep on dying. Not to die. Look at that. God is lying to you. That's what he's saying. God is lying to you. Had God ever lied to them or deceived them in any way? But well, we have a person come up here and he said, He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. Now here we have the devil in this serpent. Now this serpent is talking, isn't he? Now evidently the serpent must have been able to talk before. Because if she had come up here and listened to the serpent talking, it would have shocked her. Maybe she would have run off squeaking and squealing and everything. But she didn't. And the serpent is talking to her and he's deceiving her. This is what we call a deceiving serpent. He's the whisperer, the charmer. He's charming her. Okay? Just like the rest of his prey. Okay? Now the serpent at this time was not killing other animals and eating it, was it? No. But he is acting like he, he was going to act. And that wouldn't happen until how, how long before the serpent would begin to eat other animals? 
after Noah. That's when he's going to start eating into that other animals. Now it says over there in the millennium that these serpents will be eating herbage just like the rest of the animals. We'll go right back to that. And the serpent said unto the woman, Not dying to die, you shall keep on dying. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're just not going to do it. Let's go do one more before I quit. I just got to go to the next one. Okay? Number five. Long verse. Key. Yodia. Elohim. Key. Bayom. Achalikem. Memenu. Winef ke chu. I ne kem. We he atem. Ki elohim. Yodea. To. Wara. <clears throat> because knowing look at that word knowing there that's gnosko in Greek gnosko knowing masculine singular cal participle knowing Elohim that word Elohim means what Marilyn what's Elohim mean no Elohim how about you Pamela Creator. Elohim is always creator. Jehovah, or Halavar, means he who shall become. Your creator because that in the day, or in day, literally, it just means in day. In day, be yom. That means in day. In day, you're eating. Look at that. You to eat, literally. You to eat. You all to eat. You all to eat. Cal, infinitive, second person, masculine, plural, construct. <coughs> Cal, infinitive, construct, second person, masculine, plural. In the day of your to eat, from him, from this tree, remember, from him, and then... See, and they shall have opened up. They shall have opened up. They shall have opened up. Look at that one. And they shall have opened up. <coughs> Third person construct plural. Wow, consecutive, perfect, nif el sim. Your eyes. I nikem. Your eyes. I nikim. And then we have the word vi hayatim. And ye shall have become. Ye shall have become. Ki Elohim. Ki Elohim, that's what that means. What does that mean? Like gods, like creators. You're going to be like creators. Like creators. Knowing ones, Yodia. Knowing ones. Cal, masculine pearl, cal participle, knowing ones. Tov, good and evil. Knowing good and evil. Right now they knew good, didn't they? All right, they knew good. This is what I wrote a long time ago. By participating in the eating of this tree, they shall know evil and good. Romans, the first chapter. And they shall have become habitual sinners, liars, Romans 3.23. And they shall have become the first thieves in the human race, and they took what was not theirs to have. That was God's. That tree was sacred. You don't touch it. You leave it alone. Leave it alone. That's not yours. <coughs> If mankind had refrained from eating, stealing, 
from the tree that was God's, he would have slowly, naturally gained all knowledge, but without the infection of sin destroying his destroying his spiritual and physical being. And understanding the knowledge and retaining everything that he had ever learned. Retaining everything that he had ever learned. And it was a processive, what we call a progressive knowledge, that he would have finally progressed to where he knew everything there was in the universe. If he had not, of course, that's just if he had not. That's a, uh, a conditional particle there that's not there. But he would have known. God would have not kept anything from him at all, would he? Where do we go from tonight? Three what? I mean, not three, but uh, 224. 224. 2, 3, and verse 5. 224 to 3, 5. <coughs> do you have any questions? I do. Okay. Okay. Uh, nothing <coughs> No. So when God said you will surely die, did they, I mean, I know the concept of separation, but did they get it? I mean, how do we know they even understood that? They understood it when Cain killed Abel. Yeah, that was down yeah. the road. They understood it when Cain killed Abel. But, I mean. Now, they, had they ever seen death before this? No. No. No death. What was the first thing they were going to see? What was the first death they were going to see? Murder of the child. No. What was the first death that they were going to see? What was the first death? The Buddhists don't like this at all. What was the first death they were going to see, Brother A? What was the first death that they were going to see? God was going to slaughter an innocent animal for their sins. It was one of their companions that died. And then they were clothed with those clothes for the rest of their lives and could remember the one that they caused death. They caused his death. Think about that. How would you like to be clothed with a favorite dog that you had? A favorite horse? Kitty cat. And wear those clothes for all your life. All your life. Let me tell you a little bit of histor history. Now, this is from the book of Jasher. The lamb that they killed was probably a lamb that they were very, very loved very much. Okay? That lamb was going to typify what? Huh? Their sin. The lamb was dying for their sins. It didn't do anything but God killed this animal and skinned it and clothed them with that animal and those clothes lasted them all of their life. Huh. And guess what they had to do when their children needed clothes? What did they do? They made a sacrifice. And all these animals not killed each other. These were all pets. These were all companions that they were killing. And then, after the sacrifices and killing that they were doing, you know, they made, they made sacrifices, whether they did it once in their life or whatever. I don't know exactly what happened. This is before the law of Moses. This is before Kamarabi and Hammurabi and all of that. But they were familiar with death now because they saw something that they loved and they, they saw living and breathing and all of a sudden they saw death in its eyes. And it was no more. They couldn't eat it. They weren't supposed to eat meat at all yet, were they? No, they couldn't eat it. And then Cain came along, their first child, and Eve says, I have gotten the man, even Jehovah. Here's our Savior now. They didn't understand all about that. And then what did this Savior, this Antichrist, remember the Genesis 3.15, this is the first Antichrist, what did this Antichrist do? 
He murdered violently his brother. He lied. He stole. He was so wicked. And he was so evil. And he was so deceptive. And his brother was doing right. He was the what? This man was what? This was going to be the patriarch of the family. He was the eldest child. He was the heir to the family. After Adam would die, he would have been the heir. Abel was no threat to him ever. He was not the heir. Abel's name means what? <clears throat> Remember what Abel's name means? We're going to look at the first ten names in the Bible. They all tell the story of salvation. Mist. What? Like it's like a, a, a mist, a vapor, or brief. A brief life. He would have a brief life. But that's what they called him, brief. God may have inspired him naming that because his life was brief. They saw in just a few moments what had caused them. When they, we'll see here, but when they sinned, they wanted to cover their sins, didn't they? Because they were naked. And they got fig leaves and sewed the fig leaves together and made aprons out of them. That's what it says, apron. Fig leaves are really scratchy. I, I, you know, putting a fig leaf on you is like taking stinging nettles and making something out of that. Really? You know what a fig, you, you've been around figs. I don't, I don't like figs. I'm allergic to them. They make my mouth this itch and burn, and, and I don't like them. Uh, it, it's, it's, I pick, the first job I ever got was picking figs. As a, uh, a, a teenager, I got a job out there picking figs off of fig trees. That wasn't a good job. Your hands stick forever. So you couldn't ever get that stuff off of there. And those leaves just sting you all over. They make clothes out of that. Making clothes out of something like stinging nettles. It's pitiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a poor choice, wasn't it? It was a poor choice here that she was going to make, and it's going to be a poor choice later. That God had to show him something. Anything? Any other questions here before we? What did Cain mean? Cain. What does Cain mean, Pam? Huh? What does Cain mean? Brother Abe, what's Cain mean? Cain. 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 Brother Mike. Cain. Sharon. Shine. <laughs> gotten. Gotten. Okay. Gotten. Gotten or possession. Gotten. I have gotten a man, even the Lord. Okay. I've gotten a man, even. Anything else? Brother Mike, you got any questions? All right, Abe. So Deep study, in, brother. In, in, in the process, it seems like they probably sat down and went, "We didn't die," and they probably had to wrestle with that. They probably wrestled with that, but what else did they know? Well, they knew. That they, they knew what shame was. Now they had shamed each other, hadn't yeah. they? Now they knew what shame was. Now they knew what grief was. And remorse, tears. They were bawling, probably. Ah, no. They didn't instantly start getting wrinkles, woman, didn't you know, or anything like that, or that wasn't what instantly happened. But they knew they were undone. And we'll find out what God said next week. What did God say? What happened? Okay. All right. Anything else? before I dismiss you. Go out and do something eternal. Brother Roger, would you dismiss us in prayer, please, brother? Father, thank you for bringing us here so that we can explore your word and delve deeper and, and uh, try to find how it applies to our lives. I pray for our people that are being persecuted for your word and their love and appreciation for who and what you are in our lives. That is to direct us as we leave here and all that we say and do and think. In your name I pray all these things.